you are called to be a blessing to everyone we meet on our journey every day. Dear friends, today we get inspiration from the book of Genesis chapter 12 verses 1 to 9 which talks about the call of Abraham and from the gospel of Matthew chapter 7. Dear friends, the call of Abraham, the vocation of Abraham can be compared to our own calling in life. What are you called to be? What are you called to do? We are all called to spread good news and we are called to be a blessing to everyone we meet on our journey. We are called to make life easier for everyone we meet on our journey. We are called to spread good news. Abraham at 75 years old is called by God. And the Lord says to Abraham, leave your country, your family, leave your father's house and go to the land which I will show you. How uncertain could this be, humanly speaking, that God, if he was to ask you, leave your country, leave your parents, leave your family, leave everything and come to the land that I will show you. It's not obvious that I know and I understand what the Lord is saying. Indeed, but Abraham, even without understanding much, he accepts the call of the Lord, the voice of the Lord, that voice that speaks deep in our hearts, that voice of the Spirit within us. He listened to that voice telling him to move to the unknown. Many times we fear the unknown. Abraham could have had his fears, yet he trusts in the Lord and moves into the unknown. He moves into a land that he doesn't know. He trusts the Lord. He entrusts everything into God's hands. Dear friends, in our life also, we could have left our homes, like even husband and wife, they leave their father and they go and form their own family. Even we religious, we leave our family and we embrace a whole big family and all become our brothers and sisters. We are called to embrace everyone, whether married or not married, we are called to embrace everyone as brothers and sisters, to move away from where we are to go and reach out to everywhere, uh, as where, wherever we go, to spread good news always and everywhere. Even in the family, where we grow, thanks to the, our parents and our brothers and sisters, we grow, we are enriched with many beautiful, nice things in the family. We are what we are, thanks to the family. It is from that goodness, that love, that joy, that peace, which we have expressed in the family, that we go out and spread that love, that joy, that peace to the rest of the world, that we become good news. So the family becomes an agent of the good news to the rest of the world. First of all, from the family itself, first of all, from the community itself, first of all, from the place of work where we are, we spread good news there, and from there, we continue to spread good news everywhere we, where we, are, we go. So this is what Abraham says. He goes to the unknown. But the Lord promises him, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. The same words that we are said to Abraham, I said to you and me that the Lord is blessing us. And he is, is, is promises us to make us a great blessing. He's blessing us so that we may bless others. He's blessing us so that we may speak well of others. He's blessing us so that we may do well to others. Because the word benedict, so benedict, it means to speak well, to do well of others. And so that is our mission. The Lord blesses us so much that he invites us to be a blessing to others. The Lord loves us so much that he invites us to love others as they are. The Lord forgives us so much that we deserve that he invites us to be forgiving towards others that we meet on our journey. Our world needs reconciliation and constant forgiveness. May I be that agent, that reconciler, that forgives. So Abraham sets on the journey. We too are on our journey here on earth as pilgrims. All of us have been called in one way or another. We have been called to family life, to religious life, to other forms of life where we fulfill our vocation, our calling, where our life has meaning for us and for others. Do I know what I've been called to? Or I do not know. Am I able to identify my calling? Abraham listens to that voice. Do I listen to the voice that tells me to do good always and everywhere and to avoid that which is negative and evil, that which does bad? 
when we listen to that inner voice in us, when we listen to that inner voice us that tells us to do good and we do, and it moves us to do good to others like it did with Abraham, we become a blessing. And we are called to be people who move to be a blessing, to be good news to everyone we meet on our journey. So Abraham entrusts his own life into the hands of the Lord. But he moves together with his own people. And we are also invited to move together with his, our own people around us so that together we are strengthened by the Lord and he blesses us even more. And the blessing of Abraham is not only to Abraham but to generations to generations to everyone. From Abraham we receive the blessings. From Abraham the Lord came through the through the roots of Jesse, who is connected to Abraham if we follow the genealogy. So we are a we share in the blessings that were given to Abraham, our father. Remember, Abraham is a great man for us Christians, for the Jews is a great man, and for the Muslims is a great man. In the major religions, which are Christianity, Jew, Jewish religion, and, and Muslim, Abraham is the central aspect, the central personality whom we can invoke so that we may be a blessing, we may be a peaceful presence wherever we are in our families and wherever we are. So Abraham is told that I will bless those who bless you. Dear friends, whenever we bless others, whenever we speak well of others, whenever we do good to others, the Lord blesses us more. The Lord speaks well to us more. The Lord does great things in us more so that we can continue doing great things to others. And the Lord continues to say, I will curse those who curse you, who slight you, those who speak negative things about you, who speak bad about you, who do bad to you, I will curse them. Meaning, if I choose to do good to others, I will receive goodness. If not in this world, in the next. If I choose to do bad to others, I will unfortunately have chosen my own grave, my own painful reality, my own death. My life is to choose good so that I receive more blessings already in this world and in the next. And all the tribes of the earth shall be blessed and I will bless them. They will be blessed by you. The Lord says that the, all the tribes of the world will be blessed by Abraham. And all the tribes, meaning your tribe, my tribe, we are blessed when we hold on to Abraham. When we hold on to the Lord who blesses Abraham. When we call on the intercession of Abraham, and he said, Abraham, the Lord entrusted you everything. And to be, even the blessings were, fell in your hands. And through you we receive the blessings. Please intercede for us to the Lord God. So that those blessings can still continue overflowing. Today we need a lot of these blessings. So we see Abraham went as the Lord told him. And because he went, he received blessings. Behold, he listened to the voice of the Lord. He received blessings. When we move ourselves, when we listen to the voice of the Lord in our hearts to do good, and we move ourselves, we receive the blessings of the Lord and we become blessings for others. When we stay in one place and when we are cold hearted, then the blessings pass us. We don't receive them as we should. So the Lord invites us to listen to that voice in us and to move ourselves. As Christians, we are people who move. Who are in action. We are moved by the Spirit. The Spirit is on fire. He sets us on fire to continue being a blessing to everyone we meet on our day. And Abraham at 75 years, he's able to move. And for us who have not yet even reached, I don't know how many years, are we able to move? So it means whatever age we are and wherever we are, we are invited to move our hearts towards love, to move our hearts towards, free, towards that freedom, that peace, to move and share to move ourselves, not to stay in one place, not to be stagnant, not to be cold-hearted, but to be warm-hearted. Because the spirit we embrace is the spirit that puts our hearts on fire. And we know very well that from Abraham at his old age, together with Sarah, the Lord even blesses them with the children, with a child. Meaning that there's nothing impossible with the Lord if we trust him everything that seems to be impossible becomes possible. Lord, increase our faith. Lord, increase our trust in you so that 
whatever mountains we may face in our lives, you may actually turn them into blessings. Increase our faith, Lord. We believe in you. Increase our faith. And so that we may be a blessing to everyone we meet today. And we got another inspiration, dear friends, from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 7, where we are invited not to judge in order not to be not that not to be judged we ourselves. Dear friends, it's so, 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 so interesting that uh, we are invited to take, to take out the big, the big what? To take out the big plank from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 to 5. We are invited to take out the big plank in out of our eyes so that by taking it out, then we will be able to see the small, the small splinter, like a small stick, in in the eye of our brother and sister. Many times we are invite, we we find ourselves judging others. Many times we find ourselves looking for the many mistakes in others, and sometimes they are just small mistakes. And many times we are the ones who have even bigger mistakes. We are the ones who have big logs of mistakes. But yet we look for that small stick of mistake in others. The Lord says, let us remove first of all the big negative logs of mistakes in us that are blocking us from seeing what is good in others. Let's remove them first. Let's work on ourselves. Let's work on ourselves to learn from whatever happens to us, to learn to be good and to do good. Let's work on ourselves to know what our sins are and work on them so that we are able to be free people, to be happy people, to be peaceful people. Let's work on ourselves. Let's be positive. Let's work on ourselves to be positive. Then it is then that we are, when we have worked on ourselves and we are going through an experience many times which may be painful. When we work on ourselves, it may be painful. But that's the work, the journey we are invited to. That we, each one of us is called to work on ourselves, to work on ourselves to see how we become good. So when we work on ourselves and we have become positive, and we have become good people, then we are able to understand also that the struggles of others. We are able to help others using the same help that we have received, using the same experience that we have gone through. Maybe sometimes which is always painful. We are able to understand even mercifully others. We are able to forgive others easily because we know that as we could have made even heavier mistakes, others can make also mistakes and they need to be forgiven just as we needed to be forgiven. The Lord says, let's work out ourselves and remove out the big negative blocks in our eyes first. Then we are able to go into see, in that case we are able to see, in order to be, to help others, also to accompany others with more mercy, with more love, with more tenderness into doing good. This does not mean that we should not be able to correct others. No, we are prophets, and we have to, as prophets, we have to speak what is good in order to encourage others. But also, we are invited to use with respect to speak that which may not be okay, so that to help my brother, my sister, is a good prophet does not keep quiet when something is wrong. A good prophet does not keep quiet when something is right. We share in the prophets. We are prophets. We are kings with a high dignity because of our baptism. We are because we are created in the image and likeness of God and we are priests who can intercede for others also in our prayers we have the power to pray for others and intercede for others so in this case as prophets we have to speak good things to encourage others but also challenge others with respect so of course we may have our own uh, challenges but we are invited with respect to understand others and to help them so when I've removed my big blocks my negative blocks my sinful blocks, my awkward blocks in my life, in my eyes, then I'll be able to see clearly how to help others. But if I still am blocked I, uh, with my negativity, the only lens I use, if my, what is blocking me is negative, is black, is dark, I am not able to see even the small and the big good things that another person is doing. So I have to remove that negativity away and in order to see what is positive in my brother and sister, in order to appreciate, in order to encourage others, in order to uplift others, in order to be patient with others, in order to be understanding towards others. May the Lord bless you, dear friends. 
so that we may continue being a blessing wherever we are. We may continue speaking well of others. We may continue doing well and doing good to others. Amen.